I'm delighted to be talking to Andy Spark from the West Berkshire Injury Clinic. Hi, Andy. Good to see you in the clinic. So you're visiting your premises once a week. You have to check on it for insurance purposes. That's right, Penny. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Yes, we have to check just to make sure that there's no damage, that there's no water leaks or anything like that. Uh, and just to make sure everything's still here yeah. and still okay. No, okay. So, so you're in Hungerford, um, the top of Hungerford High Street, yeah. opposite the Borough Arms. Um, yes. For people who don't know the clinic, could you give us a really quick tour? Of course I can. What I'm going to do is I'm doing, excuse my thumbs and fingers, I'm using my tablet. So the thing is, is we've got two treatment rooms. Uh, we've got the uh, large room, which we actually use as a rehab area. Um, and the thing is, is that we've got exercise balls, um, weights, information like that. And we have got a couch here, which we can treat on as well, which uh, covers that. Now, we have a number of things and we have the bands. We have, the, obviously you can see the hand sanitizer as well. And uh, the thing is, is that we also have uh, another treat, treatment room as well. Now this, as you can imagine, this is actually um, currently we're, we've got everything shut down almost. So the thing is, everything is put away. And also we, at the time, we've also got expert foot care, the podiatrist with us as well, okay. because they work in the um, GP surgery at a period of time. Effectively, that's the clinic. Yeah, so and I, do you know what, it's the, it's the hardest thing for me, lockdown, is, is, is missing my appointments with the osteopaths in your clinic, because they, Laura yeah. keeps me, keeps me uh, going, basically. Um, so, the, what, what support are you able to give your clients at this time? Well, at the moment, what we are doing, there's two things that we're actually doing. One of the things is that we're offering online appointments. Now, people don't really see sometimes how can you sit, treat people, how can you assess people if you're not face to face. But there are some things that we can do. We can get people to move. We can ask them where the pain points are. We can go through some tests, which they can do that themselves. Which, and then we can actually provide some advice and also exercise advice as well. Um, and it's something we've been doing with a, number, with a few clients and they've actually found it very, very helpful in actually um, helping them, especially at this time when people are not moving as much as they were. Yeah, or maybe they're moving more than they were if they've decided to take up running or something. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Exactly and right. I, I mean, you, you've kind of helped me with a knee problem I had um, from a silly gardening injury. There's something reassuring about being able to talk to an expert and say, you know, am I going to be all right? You know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to collapse here because I think we're all slightly hypochondriacal at the moment. Any slight twinge, we think, oh, my God, it's going to be terrible. So it's really good to get your reassurance. Absolutely. I think you're right. I think that people are concerned about the aches and pains. They might have had them before and might not have noticed them. Yeah. But uh, the thing is, is actually, uh, and, but the thing is having that help, having that advice can provide reassurance. And at this time, it's actually important to provide reassurance. Absolutely. And um, so your industry, how, you know, I can't imagine how, how you're going to, what the new normal is going to be for you. Have you got any idea? in your mind how it's going to work there's a lot of discussion going on at the moment at the moment there's no there's no industry there's no association that has given the green light for people to start back working yet the chiropractors british chiropractic association osteopaths sports therapists like like ourselves physios and osteos are able to work in emergency scenarios only but it's very much a choice for them as well Mm. But um, it is something that we are talking about. What the, there is going to be a new norm yeah. once we are able to start working. Um, actually, having a waiting area, which I'm standing in now, will not be used mm. at, uh, once we actually get back. You probably won't be allowed in the clinic until your actual appointment. So, mm. But we are, you're probably going to find that there's going to be gaps. We're going to be having gaps between appointments. And we're going to be having to clean mm. between appointments. Yeah. And so the thing is, is it depending on the cleaning material, it's either going to be have to dry on it of its own accord or be 
or until it's touch dry or whatever and that's going to take a bit of time so we are going to be looking at how we can do that and also probably minimizing the face-to-face -face time mm. that we have with clients mm. uh, to reduce the level of risk and that's going to be probably using a mixture of face-to-face -face appointments and online appointments. I think that's going to become the new normal for everybody. Yeah, so you'll do the consultation but, remotely, but then the actual treatment is hands-on. I mean, that's the nature of it. So how's that going right. to work? Well, the thing is, is that people will come in and go straight into the treatment room mm. to be treated. We will already know what we're going to do and what the mm. plan is for the treatments. Mm. Um, it is, um, we will be wearing PPE okay. of some form. Yeah. What, uh, what that PPE will actually be, I, I couldn't tell you at the moment, but I would be, be thinking it would be face, face coverings, aprons, and possibly gloves as well. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is there going to be hygiene requirements. We're probably going to be washing hands before and after, even if we were wearing gloves, and we'll be going to be asking the clients to do the same things. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be very much, it's going to be risk averse. But yeah. I think that's right. Oh, totally. But I think, um, I, I think we, that will be the new norm once we are out, allowed to open. Absolutely. And, and I'm guessing it'll be a government decision, not an industry decision when you can open. It's going to be a mixture of three things. It's going to be government uh, through Public Health England. It is going to be our governing bodies. And it was also going to be down to the individual therapists themselves as to when they feel comfortable and when they feel safe about opening. Uh, yeah. Because the thing is, is that some of the therapists have got their own families yeah, and, yeah. and it's whether they're willing to take or want to take any risk. And there will be, it will be a period of heightened risk, uh, whether we like it or not. Yeah. And the thing is, is that we will be following the developments on the uh, contact app that's been developed by the NHS for tracking people with uh, with the with COVID-19 as well. So it, there is going to be a complete change, but we're still going to be friendly. We're still going to be here to help, Yeah, I think, once we are allowed to open. Yeah, of course. Well, um, it just sounds very reassuring that when you do open, it will be a completely, um, you know, as safe as it possibly can be. And I, I heard the Football yes. Association, they're going to start training again. Um, and they said it's going to be yes. sa safer than going to the supermarket. That seems to be the benchmark. <laughs> so, uh, I, think, I, I think that's probably right. I think it's going to be the same with, uh, with all sports, actually. Mm -hmm. They will start training. But in a sensible socially mm. distanced way mm. and the thing is is that it will help with the nation's mental health as well as their mm. physical health Absolutely. which i think is something that's appropriate yeah yeah so so um we obviously we, there's no point speculating over timelines here we've absolutely no idea no. until you're going to be able to get your lovely clinic back open but in the meantime can you just let people know how they can contact you if they'd like help over the phone or zoom is it is that how you do it absolutely like, yeah. yeah the thing is is the best way best way to do it is actually to email uh, into the clinic and the, the thing is is that we've got two email addresses you can use either info at or bookings at westbarkshireinjuryclinic.co.uk you can always contact us through facebook and messages message us on facebook we will come back to you um, and the thing is is that we do have a contact number which uh, as well and but uh, and that number is 01488 four nine three zero one four you can call, contact us in any of those on nice. any of those okay. um, ways okay. yes and and just to remind people that you don't just have the clinic in hungerford you've got one in newbury as well so that's um, right yes people are thinking ahead as to you know starting with a therapist remotely that they hope to see face to face there is that choice yeah. in hungerford or newbury absolutely future. yes yeah absolutely Lovely. yeah well, well done, Andy. It's an awful lot to juggle and um, I hope your stress levels, you're keeping them under control because you've got your therapist to take care of and worry about as well as all of your clients. So you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Yeah. And the thing is, is that so just everybody just keep well and keep safe. We can beat this and we will beat it. Brilliant. Wonderful. Thank you, Andy.